This is Dr. Gaines, superintendent of Melville School District with another data update here on October 23rd. Now we're gonna do the data a little bit different this time and we're gonna start with all of our internal data now that we've got four to five weeks of that with elementary opening our hybrid and middle school now for a little while. So every Monday in, in the afternoon, we update our dashboard uh, with numbers from the prior week. For the week of October 12th to October 18th, um, we had to ask over 250 students to remain off campus. And that was largely the bulk of those were at Washington Middle School uh, because of some primary contacts there, we had to send a significant number of students home. Now, this week, uh, we have received word from the CDC that um, the guidelines for quarantining have changed. And we believe um, that probably that means that our numbers are gonna go up if we look over week over week, we can see that we had a big increase in those students uh, that were asking to be off campus. And that's kind of proportional to what we're seeing in terms of the number of students that we've brought back. Um, as we've introduced more students coming back to school in our hybrid model, our numbers have gone up. Right, So we tripled the amount of kids who were on campus and we've seen our numbers go up. And even though last week or um, that week of through the 18th, we did see a high number of students quarantine, that would essentially be like um, a really kind of what we might consider bad attendance day. Um, and we can see that overall, the rate of students testing positive over those first four weeks um, has been less than a half a percent. And that cumulatively, about 8% of our K-8 students have been asked to remain off campus. We have been tracking our high school numbers over this course of the four weeks, even though they have not been in session. When we look at the age band positivity rate, uh, which we get from the St. Louis uh, Education Task Force. Uh, we can see that numbers for elementary age students remain uh, in a nice area. We have seen a slight tick up for middle school students, however, which seems to make sense uh, given what we've experienced, especially at Washington Middle School. We also are gonna show for the first time, we've got some data that we've been pulling from the state um, and that we're able to look at within our boundaries, what's happening in different age ranges. And you'll see that um, if you compare some of these numbers, they don't always match up from these different sources. That's been a challenge uh, throughout the pandemic but these are publicly available on the state website. You can see that uh, we've got relatively low numbers of cases in that elementary age group, and we've got um, 12 and 14 in the middle school and high school age bands, which is lower than what we were experiencing at the end of September. When we look at the age band cases per 100,000, here more recently, you can begin to see an uptick on the longitudinal chart. And then you can also see the same in the 7, 14, and 21 day looks. And what we see when we look at a number of pieces of data um, that around that October 6 to 8 range is when we started to see numbers begin to climb. The county positivity rate, um, we've got a more um, longitudinal uh, data source for that. However, um, at the state level, 
the state is now producing two positivity rate numbers. One is the CDC calculation rate. Another one is uh, what they're calling a deduplication rate, um, and that rate is significantly higher. So we can see in the seven day, uh, we've, the positivity rate has been relatively stable, but we can see an increase over the 14 and 21 day uh, from kind of, you know, the fours and fives up now to closer to the eights. When we look at percent change in daily cases, that continues to be ups and downs um, over the course of the last few weeks. When we look at the cases per 100,000 within our zip code, again, we map that to, we've begun to see increases since about that October 6 to 8 range. In September, things were fairly stable to slightly declining, but in October, we've seen a, pretty much a steady increase throughout the month. When we look at the seven, the 21, and the 14 day looks again, we're seeing those increases. So for now, the plan is that we'll remain in the K through eight blended model, and we're still gonna stick with our plan to move our high schools to blended models on Tuesday. I know high schools have been preparing for that. They've been sending out information relative to that. And as we've said, going back several weeks now, as we come into session, we're looking to close classrooms before buildings, buildings before the district, trying to get as many students in session as we can. As always, you know, I kind of try to wrap this up with asking you to be sure to wear your mask and to social distance. What we're finding is it looks like is that the mitigation strategies that we have in our schools are doing fairly well. It's the stuff that happens outside of school that's having an impact on us. So it's up to all of us as a community to do what we can to reduce the spread of the virus. So please, please, please wear those masks, make sure that you social distance from others, try to avoid the large gatherings, wash your hands frequently, and by all of us doing our part and taking responsibility for our own health and the health of those around us, hopefully we'll be able to see lower numbers and we can return more and more students to school. Thank you all and I hope you have a great weekend.